Citizen is one of the largest watch companies in the entire world, and it's hard to really unpack everything that is in their catalog. They're also a bit of a mixed bag. You have some watches that are geared more to the non-watch buying public for people that are maybe just strolling through their local shopping mall, but then you also have some watches that are more geared towards the enthusiast or the collector. And in this video, we're going to be looking at that latter type of buyer for the enthusiast, 18 different watches from Citizen that you might be interested in if you've never looked at the brand before in the past. Of course, this can't be completely comprehensive because as I mentioned, it's easy to get lost and we'd be here all day if we were talking about all of Citizen watches. This is more of just my opinion, good places to maybe look at for the first time, easy recommendations for those that have interest in Citizen watches and wanna know maybe what are some of the easy picks or watches to maybe at least have on your radar as you look at the brand. Also, if you like watches in this price segment of under $1,000, most of the watches will be on this list under $1,000, except some anomalies that are pretty cool because Citizen does have some higher end offerings. If you want a comprehensive guide to watches under $1,000, check out in the description, 50 of our best watches for 2023 under $1,000. The guide includes aviation timepieces, diving, dress, digital, every day, looking at lovable Casios under $50, all the way up to around $1,000. So that is interesting to you. Want to see that list, very comprehensive, over 50 watches on it. Link will be in the description down below. To kick us off here, we're going to look at the ProMaster collection and start there. There's probably two terms that people will often hear and probably most associate with the brand Citizen, even if you're not that familiar with the brand. One will be the ProMaster and the other will be EcoDrive, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But the ProMaster collection are their capable professional watches produced to a variety of different specifications. They're broken down into four categories, land, air, sea, and then also they have a diver automatic category on their website and that's part of the positioning, which I think is a little weird. I'm just going to lump that in with C just for the ease of being able to put this all together. Now, I believe there's two areas within the ProMaster collection that I would give a recommendation to for those that are into the style of watches. One would be the air collection or the sub collection underneath the ProMaster and then C. These are two areas where not only do they have their own DNA, but if you look at actual divers, if you're on a dive boat, you'll see many Citizen watches. And then also with pilots, you will see many Citizen pilot watches on the wrist of actual pilots. I remember my cousin, who is actually a professional pilot for a major airline, his first watch was a Citizen. Let's begin with the air aviation side of things for Citizen. And that's really gonna be defined by their Hawk series. So these are broken down into a variety of different uh, classifications. First, with my personal favorite, this is going to be the ProMaster Nighthawk. Of all their aviation pieces, this one feels like it bridges the gap between someone who maybe does not have a actual profession in the aviation world and being able to pull it off and just getting that spec to come along with it, while also offering up enough for those that actually have a profession where these type of specifications would be required. This watch has been in the collection over a decade. Uh, was updated quite substantially in 2022 and is designed to look like a helicopter cockpit at night. It comes in multiple variations, tracks two time zones, slide rule bezel, well-loomed indices, and getting some incredible water resistance of 200 meters despite being an aviation timepiece. This is a very very busy watch, but as you'll see coming up, not as busy as the ones to come along. EcoDrive movement on the inside, which we'll talk about this very briefly. This was a technology produced in the 1990s by Citizen, and Citizen has a long history of using solar power to power some of their watches. Early days started back in the 1970s, but the EcoDrive is really where they industrialized the process, made it available in many of their different watches, and now it is really their proprietary technology that they can own uh, and really are leaders in that whole arena. And you could also argue that this is probably the most robust combination of quartz oscillation with solar power to have very light maintenance going forward. The other reason why I like the Nighthawk though, jumping back here, 42 millimeters and a 47 millimeter lug to lug, very wearable, still getting 200 meters of water resistance and an eco drive movement on the inside. Next, we take it up a notch going for the Skyhawk AT. So this is going to be a larger watch at 45 millimeters with that 52 millimeter lug to lug. And it is really about the business and utilities. The model line also has a notable uh, affiliation with the Blue Angels and is a modern evolution of early Citizen Pilot watches uh, from 1989 to be exact, the Citizen Pro Master Pilot. Features atomic timekeeping and 43 cities, a chronograph, perpetual calendar, dual time, alarm, countdown timer, backlight, UTC, power reserve. It is much busier and also includes some different titanium options, which I do wanna bring up when talking about titanium, that's gonna be a theme here throughout this video. Citizen was actually the first brand to incorporate and introduce a watch made of titanium back in 1970. 
And then for another hawk to look at here, we have the ProMaster Navi Hawk. This is going to be the biggest of all of them at 48 millimeters, 52 millimeters in the lug to lug department, while still delivering when it comes to specifications down the board and being very much about just giving you more and nothing less. 200 meters, sapphire crystal, uh, more technical in its watch display. It's designed to look like a modern fighter jet heads up display. Atomic timekeeping, chronograph function, day of the week, perpetual calendar, 12 and 24 hour markers, slide rule again, daylight saving time trigger, battery spent indicator. There's a lot here in to get lost with. And also it's very easy to swap between time zones. So it's a great traveling watch and aviation watch, of course. Now we move into the diving parts of the ProMaster collection. If I had to identify one area where I would recommend Citizen the most, it would be with their dive watches. I think you have a lot of variety here. You have some good tech with EcoDrive in some of their watches, also getting access to Miyota calibers as Citizen does own Miyota, the Citizen Group. So you have access to a variety of different movements there, a lot of designs, a lot of nicknames affiliated, and a lot of history to go along with diving. You could probably argue that the only other brand that's going to rival it is Seiko, but I don't think enough people give Citizen their credit when it comes to their diving lineup. To kick us off, we have the EcoDrive Diver. This is your conventional, EcoDrive dive watch, professional spec, ISO 6425 compliant, 44 millimeter case, 11.5 millimeters in thickness, 48 millimeter lug to lug, having that Seiko turtle effect where it's going to wear much smaller. I would say this wears like a 41 and a half to 42 millimeter on wrist. EcoDrive 200 meters, loom on all of these watches are phenomenal. That's going to be pretty much the case for every citizen watch that you're going to handle when you're talking about this dive category. Class leading without question. Also, I will mention too, at the point of recording this video, they did also unveil 37 millimeter versions of these watches. So if you want something that is a bit more compact, like the smaller form factor, you have that as well. So what if you're somebody that likes the look of the EcoDrive dive watches, but you want a mechanical movement on the inside, which I know is some people out there, you could then look at the Fugu model. So these are classics, cult favorite watches from Citizen. They recently were rolled out to the US market in 2022. So a lot of fanfare with seeing these watches kind of return. Fugu refers to pufferfish in Japanese. So that is what the connection is. And if you ever flip the watch over, you'll see that pufferfish there. So you'll have no mistake there. I probably don't need to be fluent in Japanese to figure that one out with that big uh, puffer fish on the reverse side. 44 millimeter case, but again, wearing smaller than that. I would say that these wear a little bit larger than the previous EcoDrive divers, both because of the thickness, as well as the lug to lug being slightly larger. Uh, nice water resistance, ISO 6425 compliant, great loom. You also have a variety of different dials and styles to go for case materials now, uh, looking at some of the, the black DLC. Uh, and then in addition, you have the full loom dial effect with some of these watches, which is pretty cool to look at as well. And one thing I also mentioned with these watches, why they're so acclaimed and loved is they also have just great pedigree in the industry, uh, well known in the diving community. These were originally unveiled in 1989. Now we shift into something even funkier and also referring to marine life. We have the Citizen Orca. So this is a watch that it's goofy. It's uh, a little bit out there in terms of its design style. You have this very imposing case, this bezel action, the markings on the dial, it's unmistakable. And then you also on the reverse side have another marine life animal with the uh, orca whale on the back side. Diameter of 46 millimeters, thickness of 14.6 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 49.3 millimeters. This is pretty unique wearing experience with this one, just given the fact that despite some of the dimension set, you have compact lug to lug, but then in addition to that, you have this very imposing structure with both its case, its markers, bezel, everything is about getting attention and being easy to read, which when you're talking about a professional dive watch, probably a good thing to have. Next, we have the ProMaster Dive EcoZilla. This is a cult favor among divers as well as citizen fans. 48 millimeter case, but it's essentially a round, perfectly round case and wears much more compact. Water resistance of 300 meters, EcoDrive B873 on the inside, mineral glass. It was originally launched in 2004, similar era to the Orca, and you kind of see that with the design and what these watches were going for. This was a period of watch design. You had kind of the bling era going on with some of the higher end luxury brands. This was a very interesting time for watch design across the board, uh, especially for Citizen, as you're seeing with some of these watches that came from this era. Notable notch bezel 
that is easier to use and it's also going to be raised to assist further and to create a protective like shroud to the crystal. And despite its name of Ecozilla, it's more wearable than you might expect. Funky dive watches continue with the ProMaster Diver Retrozilla. This is really known for its case architecture, it's square bolstered case that has a silhouette that is as funky as you're ever going to come across. The case basically looks like a square that didn't want to finish the job or just be a little bit more out there. 13 millimeters, eco drive caliber on the inside, ISO compliant and lightweight um, with getting some super titanium DLC in the process. Next, we move into the Citizen Challenge Diver. So this was received with a lot of fanfare when it was released last year. This is based on a 1970s design, but what allowed to further its diving lore was when a barnacle covered version was lost to the deep depths and then washed up on the shore in Australia years after being submerged, building on an intriguing story to an already pretty classic looking design from Citizen. Full titanium case, very wearable in its dimensions set. If you're somebody that likes conventional Rolex Submariner, classic mid 20th century cases, and want something that could be presented under a thousand dollars, this is for those type of individuals. You're seeing a lot of crazy out there, eccentric, playful types of creations from Citizen. This is more just straight shooter type of approach when it comes to a dive watch, while still getting legitimate diving history, uh, lightweight, scratch resistant as well from the titanium alloy that they're using. They also just recently unveiled a black DLC version of this piece and a four hertz movement on the inside. So this is where they start introducing their nine series of calibers, making this one of the more attainable four hertz watches from a major brand in watchmaking. And then for the grand finale of dive watches from Citizen, we look at the ProMaster Aqualand. So I know many people looking at this are probably like, hey, can it slide underneath the dress cuff? I'm just kidding. This is a watch that is a big boy and doesn't pretend to be otherwise. Now the Aqualand collection debuted in 1985 and has become a mainstay thanks to its legible analog digital displays and accurate integrated depth gauges, which provides excellent backup data to complement the ever-present diving computer nowadays. Citizen's newest ProMaster combines a color-coded analog display with separate hands for time and depth tracking, along with EcoDrive charging capabilities and a surprisingly well thought out package that isn't too busy, but it is going to be a large watch. This is for those real diving enthusiasts can absolutely go through those paces and take anything you throw at it. And then to close here, we have two different sections. First is just going to be some other just entry level options from the brand. And then we go into more of the daring offerings, including some Chronomaster JDM models, which I think you'll really think are cool. Also the most accurate quartz watch in the world at this point is made by Citizen. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But here we'll look at the Citizen Toyosa. This is a watch that was unveiled last year, really tackled the trend of integrated sports watches and delivered a pretty solid watch all considered under $500. Case, you're looking at 40 millimeters, wears pretty true to that size, 11.8 millimeters in thickness, 50 meters of water resistance. That's my one downside about this watch when you're thinking about steel, sports, integrated, you typically want it to do everything for you. So seeing 100 meters would have been nice here, especially for a brand that has such great capabilities in the area of water resistance and automatic Miyota on the inside. In the US market where it was just recently unveiled, it's available currently in five different colors, includes black, light blue, yellow, green, and dark blue. An oddball choice, but one that I just wanted to give a little honorable mention to as well is the Bryson. So this is a watch that fuses some of the diving approaches with more of an everyday style. So you have a fixed bezel, titanium case and bracelet, thin case size at 10 millimeters and getting 100 meters of water resistance. Easy, clean, legible, solar powered, no nonsense. And then to close here for the more attainable section, we're gonna look at a couple field watches from Citizen because under say $300, I think they offer some pretty compelling packages until you start to get into some of the Swiss offerings from brands like Hamilton, uh, and then also maybe other Citizen Group brands like Bulova, which are right in this price range. Uh, but here you're getting more of that eco drive, no nonsense approach. First with the Chandler. So these are commonly around $200 and under 37 millimeters, which if you're talking about for someone that has a smaller wrist or wants a compact wearing dimension set, this is gonna be right up your alley, 42 millimeter lug to lug. I'm also getting hundred meters of water resistance, solid loom and an eco drive movement on the inside. And finally, we have the Garrison collection. This is another field watch category for Citizen. More to the attainable end, you have some different 
styles to choose from, a lot to get lost in. Uh, most of these are going to be in stainless steel, but you have some super titanium options as well, which will you know, add to that price point. Uh, but you can find these commonly in that two to $300 range, getting 100 meters of water resistance in most of these, essentially a no nonsense field watch for the price segment. But now to close here, I just wanna give a quick shout to also some of the more daring and technically innovative watches that Citizen are producing at more of a higher end or a premium type of position. I wanna start here with the Caliber 0100. So when this was unveiled a few years ago, I remember when this was unveiled, it was greeted with some mixed like just thoughts just because it was a higher price range. But if you look at the technology of this watch, it's pretty remarkable. So the notable thing here is plus or minus one second of accuracy per year. So this is almost going to run as accurate as any smart device that you have in your home and a watch that you could set pretty much any other watch to. How that is being achieved is through the movement on the inside and it's high oscillating frequency. So it's a quartz movement, but it has an oscillating frequency of 8 million, 8.4 million Hertz. Compare that to a mechanical watch, which is going to operate typically, at least all these citizen watches that we've talked about so far, three to four Hertz. And then to go even one step further, even if you looked at a quartz crystal that is going to be oscillating at a blistering rate, 32,768 Hertz, this dwarfs that at 8.4 million. So just think about that. Every second, that's how many vibrations are taking place. That is why it's so accurate. Then just an integrated sports watch. When most people think of Citizen integrated sports nowadays, they think of the Toyosa, but there is another model family within their collection that also is of this style, and that is their Series 8. It takes a 41 millimeter case, 47 millimeter lug to lug, and a nine series movement on the inside. Also getting some anti-magnetic properties as well to 200 Gauss, integrated steel bracelet, mix of kind of the sporty and dressy elements while getting 100 meters of water resistance. It is over $1,000, so it's some tough competition that you're going up against, uh, but a watch that I think is forgotten, overlooked, and maybe not even known by most people out there. Another crazy watch is the EcoDrive One. So what makes this watch so notable is it has a one millimeter thick movement, and the entire case is four millimeters. It holds the record for the thinnest light power watch ever made. Certainly an acquired taste, but another area where Citizen is showing their innovation and technical uh, acumen when it comes to producing their watches. And finally, we look at the Chronomaster. This might be my favorite collection from Citizen, and it's not here in the United States. Right now, it's just a JDM model, but they're very cool for a variety of reasons. For one, well-finished. Uh, this line goes back to the 1960s, I believe, and high accuracy quartz movements on the inside. Now, it's not to the same degree as that 0100, but this was, from my understanding, the most accurate quartz watches before that. And if you compare this to like the 9F quartz movements from Grand Seiko, which I am a huge fan of, I think they're class leading for what they're offering up, but these movements do give them for run for their money. And if you look at it down the board from a specification standpoint, you could argue much better. Plus or minus five seconds of accuracy per year, also going to get solar power technology. So when that battery change comes for that 9F quartz, here you are looking at a way longer interval for having any maintenance for these watches. Many variations in dials that you can choose from, super titanium. Uh, the dials, I will just give a quick shot because some of them are very beautiful. Uh, if you ever have the opportunity to see one of these in person, uh, very nice. I have not spent an extended period of time with them, but I'm hoping that they eventually will bring these to the US market because I think it's pretty cool. High performance course movement on the inside. And I think there would be an audience for these just the same way there are. there is an audience for and rightfully so for Grand Seiko's uh, quartz or premium quartz offering. But all right, guys, that's my video here today, trying to unpack the madness of Citizen Watches at time with their just expansive offering. What is maybe some of the best options for enthusiasts out there that maybe want to inspect the brand for the first time? If you enjoyed the video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also check out teddybaldeser.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to fund all of our video production here is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market, for a watch. I know you can buy a watch pretty much anywhere nowadays. Uh, we really would appreciate your business because it allows us to keep doing what we're doing here. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.